Friends, let's take a moment to pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I had um, written a different message for this morning uh, and had it ready to go, but then I watched the news this morning and uh, really felt that I needed to uh, respond um, to the um, situation, ongoing situation in the United States and now also in Canada uh, with large scale uh, protests, some of which have become uh, violent and destructive around the um, uh, relationship, uh, the tension, the, um, the mistrust between communities of color and law enforcement. So this is a different message uh, this morning and it's about um, communication. It's about speaking and listening. Today is Pentecost Sunday and on Pentecost Sunday we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we have that wonderful story in Acts about um, the ability uh, with the arrival of the Holy Spirit of uh, the, the gathered Galileans to uh, be perceived as speaking in other languages that they did not know. Well, the Holy Spirit does enable communication, comprehension, connection, and communion across cultures, across backgrounds, across languages. Humans have a natural, strong, tribal impulse. And for the sake of our survival, we tend to depend on, we're loyal to, we privilege those who are most like ourselves, those whom we recognize, those who belong to our family, to our cultural group, who speak our language and share our customs. Certainly throughout the Old Testament, there is this tension between Israel's identity on the one hand they are the covenant people, the ones chosen by God. And on the other hand, God's call to ensure justice and compassion for all of God's children. Jesus was himself a Jew and a very committed and faithful Jew, but he was also regularly crossing boundaries of culture, of language, of gender, of social status to connect with non-Jews, women, children, widows, Roman soldiers, Jewish teachers of the law, Samaritans, tax collectors, lepers, thieves, prostitutes. The Gospels tell us that the Holy Spirit was with Jesus throughout his ministry. The same spirit that brought creation into being before the beginning of time. This is the same spirit that blessed Abraham and Sarah with a son in their old age. The same spirit that spoke through the prophets and called on Israel to treat the widow and the orphan and the foreigner in their midst with justice and compassion. It was the Holy Spirit who descended upon Jesus at his baptism and then who pushed him into the desert to confirm and test his vocation. And it was the Holy Spirit who continued to push Jesus to go beyond, to step out towards the other in his life of ministry. Yes, his preaching and his teaching were surely spirit-inspired. And he says as much himself in Luke when he reads from the prophet Isaiah and declares that Isaiah's words have been fulfilled in his ministry. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. But surely, even as his speaking was spirit-inspired, so was his listening. Jesus listened to people who would normally be ignored, censured, or silenced for speaking out. He listened to a group of lepers who came to him seeking mercy when everyone else 
would have run the other way. He listened to a quick-witted Syrophoenician woman who dared to answer him back when it seemed that he wasn't much interested in healing her daughter. He listened to the theological views of a Samaritan woman he met at a well who may have been something of a pariah in her own community. He listened to a blind beggar whom his own disciples tried unsuccessfully to silence. He listened to parents who wanted them to bless their children. Jesus listened to people. He took them seriously and he responded to their humanity in love. Jesus promised his followers that after his time with them on earth was finally over, he would send the Holy Spirit to be their advocate and their guide as they continued to share and spread the good news. The reading from Acts gives us an account of the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit is poured out in a new way, in a rush of wind and tongues of fire. And it's the presence of the Spirit that causes a miraculous event of speaking and listening. People of one culture and language, Galileans, are heard to be speaking in the languages of the many other groups gathered together, though they should not be able to understand one another. In the presence and the power of the Spirit, there is communication. There is comprehension. There is connection. There is communion. Yes, the power to speak is given to the Galileans, but the power to listen and to hear and to understand is given to those who are witnesses. And this too is a blessing of the Spirit. When we look now at what is happening, not only in the United States, but in our own nation, our own province, just down the highway, with sadness and with anger and with fear, with confusion. Let us follow the example of Jesus and be willing to listen to those outside our own group, to ask the Spirit to help us to hear and to understand, to take seriously the hurt and the anger, and yes, even the rage of communities who time after time find that their lives too often do not seem to matter when they encounter law enforcement. If I was the mother of a young black man in America today, I do not know what I would do every time my son was five minutes late to walk in my door. I read an article online written by Christy Oglesby, who's a senior producer at the CNN Network and the mother of a young black man who said, quote, I need white mamas to come running. She says, I need them to hear that cry and tell their sons and daughters that my child is a human. I need them to declare and believe that he is in danger, that I can't protect him by myself, and that his life matters to me and to them. I need them to tell their white friends' children too, my child's life is sacred. My child is not dangerous. On this day of Pentecost, when we remember and celebrate God's pouring out of the Spirit on all flesh, let us ask the Spirit, let us pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to listen and to hear in a new way a holy way, so that there can be 
communication, comprehension, connection, and yes, even communion. Because that is what it is going to take. Thanks be to God. Amen.